Thank you. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, the two talks to keep you awake. Um, first of all, I'll talk a little bit about uh, Norwegian Internet Exchange in Oslo. And then I'll also do a UriX update to keep you updated on what's going on in Europe. Uh, to start off, um, the Norwegian Internet Exchange, NIX, is owned and operated by the University of Oslo. That's why I use the University of Oslo slide, slide set here. Um, we were founded back in 1993, so we're fairly old, IX-wise. And um, we are a not-for-profit organization, so we don't do this to make money for the university, but we're not allowed to lose any money either, so it's a kind of a balancing act. We are operating six independent peering points, one of them on several locations. We have 65 members and, well, 75 gigabits of uh, peak traffic on a good or bad day, depending on uh, how you see it. We have a website, of course. Uh, currently, it redirects into the University of Oslo web uh, structure, but it will be a separate website in a well, fairly short time. So this is, well, the highlights. So we could stop there, but I'll go on a little bit. Um, just a little bit of history. This was the internet back in September 1973. And uh, you've seen this drawing, but one of the interesting things was that Norway was on the map, actually. This was the the first link outside the US, because they had some spare bandwidth on a satellite link, 9.6 kilobits per second. That was very fast in 1973. Um, we haven't managed to keep that position as the only node on the internet outside the US, but it was, uh, was, was good days. Internet in Norway today, fairly similar to Sweden. I mean, Norway, Sweden, well, almost the same. We, well. <laughs> Let's try to be uh, good today. Well, um, what we see is that more than 85% of homes in Norway have fixed broadband. I think that's pr probably almost the same in Sweden. And we see a fairly equ equal split today between DSL, cable TV, and fiber. But of course, fiber grows and DSL declines. That's the business. And we have four large ISPs that have the vast majority of the marketplace. And uh, some of these big ISPs also operate in Sweden. 98% of the population have 4G, and 99.7% have, uh, have 3G or better. So we have, most people in Norway have fairly good and easy access to the internet, and a lot of adults use the internet all the time. If you have kids, they, as I mean, that's 100% of the kids. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's how the role goes. And we have two companies doing IX activity in Norway, it's us, and free IX Oslo. That's a best effort project by uh, a number of uh, very nice people. They, uh, they're not very active, but if it, and their service, if it fits your bill, it fits your bill. If it doesn't, well, don't use them. But it, that's, that's the way with uh, these free IXs. Uh, to go down back to Nix, we are operating six independent peering points, and two of them in Oslo. And that, those are for what we will call national peering. NetNode is doing, I would say, international peering, covering a, a fairly large part of, of, of Europe. We are more, much more focused on Norway. So we don't have those big international carriers connected. We have the national carriers connected to the IX. So for redundancy, we have two IXs in Oslo. We don't have the setup that NetNode has with uh, blue and green, and you connect to both uh, and all that stuff. We started up with one, and then we made another one quite a few years later for redundancy. So we have Nix1, the main peering point, where all our ISPs connect. And we have Nix1 at three locations at the moment. Um, if you're familiar with Oslo, this is a map of, of, uh, of the Oslo area. So we have the, the main pairing point where it all started, up at the university campus. Not many ISPs are located at the university campus, of course, so everyone has to lease lines into that site, which was, well, good for us, not so good for our customers. So we have expanded our, our presence to two data centers in the Oslo area. Uh, those of you operating in Oslo will be familiar with these. It's the um, 
uh, Hans Müller Gossmann's Way number E, which is uh, HM, HMG9, where, where uh, IP only, Verizon, a number of, number of uh, businesses have their, um, their locations. Telenor AB has a, a pop there. L lots of people have pops there. So we're present in the Verizon uh, area. So you can connect to us quite easily there. And we also have a node at Digiplex, the old main Digiplex facility at Ulven in central Oslo. And these are interconnected. So you, uh, you can hook up to any of these three sites and, and get connectivity to the Nix1 peering LAN. Then we have Nix2 in downtown Oslo. And it was intended as a redundant site for those who wanted redundancy in, in Norway, redundant peering. Uh, so we have made sure that we are at least three kilometers away from any of the Nix1 locations and infrastructure to facilitate a certain geographic redundancy. The, um, today, all, all members are connected to Nix1, and approximately 25 members are connected to Nix2. Outside Oslo, we have four peering points for what we call regional peering. And the, the idea comes very much from Netnode. We just stole it. Uh, and the reason we do it is that Norway is an extremely long and thin country. So it is both expensive and uh, with some risk to do internet-based business when you come far away from Oslo, especially up north, where at the, at the narrowest point, Norway is only six kilometers wide. So it's only six kilometers from Sweden to the Atlantic Ocean at one point up there. So it's very easy for all fiber connections to break. Uh, it has happened, and it will happen again. So we have one pairing point in Stavanger, the oil capital of Norway, one in Bergen, the second largest city, one in Trondheim, the technology city where we have the technology university. And, uh, and also Uninet, for those familiar with the uh, Norwegian Enron scene. And Tromsø, which is the largest uh, town, city, well, town up north. And that is also now the northernmost IX in the world. Uh, and it's difficult to compete with that. It's at uh, 69 degrees north. So it's uh, well above the Arctic Circle. The, the, the reason why we have these four peering points is not to attract international customers, but to make it possible for Norwegian ISPs to do regional offload order traffic. Uh, they have not been hugely successful, uh, to be honest, but they are all operational at the moment and will continue to be, and we are upgrading them. We we'll started in Stavanger and we will upgrade them all, because there is a focus in Norway now to to keep traffic local, which is the main point of an IX. So we'll continue to, to build on that. A um, little bit more about the IX. We, we have a, a very active cooperation with Netnode. That's why I'm here. Uh, and you heard it yesterday uh, that we do a lot of co uh, cooperation. We do this because we have many customers in common. The, the, the Scandinavian marketplace is dominated by a few large ISPs that are common, but we also have other small and medium-sized ISPs that operate in the area. And we feel that it's, it's the thing to do to cooperate. We don't intend to be one company, but we can, we can help each other to make a better product for you, our customers. That's why we do it. We have a memorandum of, of understanding dating back a few years, and now we're starting to see, or you're starting to see, uh, the, the, the effects of it. We have been um, cooperating all the time on technical st stuff and, and, uh, and also these kind of meetings where we are invited and we have our meeting where uh, Netnode is invited. So the first you've seen was announced yesterday, which is uh, Netnode Oslo, powered by Nix, which is a way for Netnode to sell Nix1 as part of the Netnode package to make the Netnode product hopefully a better and more complete product in Scandinavia. And we look forward to do more of this as, as times, times go on. We, um, we offer only 1 and 10 gig currently. We think we're reasonably priced. That's up to you to decide, but we think so. And we are planning to offer 25, 40, and 100 gig 
later this year. We're upgrading all our equipment in Oslo, so we'll, this will uh, come in. Uh, we operate three root servers, and a route server is planned for later this year. We uh, are one of those old-fashioned IXs that have not supported route servers, uh, and we feel that it's over, overdue to introduce it. We also roll out IXP Manager. Uh, are you familiar with IXP Manager, any of you? A ah, few hands. Um, IXP Manager is a, a, a software product that is made by INX, the Irish IX, uh, together with EuroIX, and it is a, an administration tool for, I would say, small, medium-sized, and maybe even large IXPs to, to assist in doing business. And it also has a customer-facing portal, uh, making it possible for you as a customer to update your own information and, and work with the, with the IX. We plan to use it in many roles. For us, it will even populate the route server. So you as a customer will put into your portal what you want our route server to know about you, and the route server will be populated automatically. We will also use it to report automatically to your IX. Uh, the technical setup uh, of our IX, we'll come back to that during the your IX presentation. But that's also an important point for us to automate some of these things and also to make it possible for you as a customer to do things yourself and not depend on us doing all the changes. Um, just to show you three screenshots of IXP Manager, uh, this is the view I got from IXP Manager. The customer portal might look a little bit different, but not too different. It is a, a website where the, the first side you will get some graphs showing the traffic on all the different um, peering points. As you see, this, is, this screenshot is taken three days after we started this version of, of uh, XP Manager. So not much data yet, but that will grow. You can also get statistics of ports, active ports, connected bandwidth, uh, all that stuff. And you can see from the menus approximately what, what's available. One of the things that's important for you as customers, I believe, is to get an overview of, of the customers connected. Uh, and you will get a much more structured and detailed overview of the customers as opposed to what we give you today. Today you just get a long list, uh, not very sorted, not very good. Uh, and you can also go in on each customer to see how, how much traffic are they running over the IX, knock information, peering information, all that stuff. This is uh, not complete yet, but as, as we open this up for our customers in a very short time, uh, we guess this will be filled up with useful information for all, all the other customers. So we look forward to have such a tool. We have uh, lacked it for many years, and we think that's an important, um, important improvement of the service we have in Oslo. So how to get in touch with us? Well, you can talk to me, of course, but the website is the obvious place to start. So um, you you'll, should get a lot of information there. You can contact me or my operational crew. Uh, Petter is here, he's my operational manager. Petter is a long, tall, blonde guy. If he's in the room and standing up, you'll always see him. <laughs> um, and uh, we also have a meeting, not as big and professional as, as the NetNode meeting. We have a one-day meeting in Oslo, May 22nd this year, and you're all welcome if you would like to go there. Just contact me or, or my operational crew and we'll add you to the list. So that was all about Nix. Um, do you have any questions about Nix? You can do that first. No, you're all sleeping, so... Okay, but thank you about that.